Tom, another day of listening to all these opinions from all these expert countries who know what's best for everybody, including America, when it comes to firearms and firearms ownership. And interestingly enough, we heard from Iran today, and what does it say? The delegation says that conventional arms should not be included in the treaty. And I'm assuming when they say conventional arms, they're talking about, quote unquote, the UN's term of small arms, which does mean our small handguns are civilian ownership firearms. That's right, and it's so odd. Politics truly does make strange bedfellows, and uh, it's weird to be in there and hear Iran express an opinion you agree with. And uh, I don't think Iran has, has a Second Amendment uh, no. in their mind when they, when they make those statements, but uh, they, you know, they are definitely opposed to the inclusion of small arms in the treaty. Now, Iran has its own agenda in the Middle East, and we're certainly not going to get into that type of big time uh, power politics here. But it, it, it's odd. You've got, you've got some uh, a weird combination. China uh, wants the treaty limited. Russia wants the treaty limited. Iran wants the treaty limited. Um, Cuba doesn't want anything to happen as far as I can tell. But it's all for their own reasons, not for the reasons this UN is claiming it's for. Uh, that's right. And, the, and this is power politics. Uh, and. and so, so it's, it's quite odd. Uh, so you, you've got this incredible mix in there. And I don't think anybody has addressed any of these fundamental questions. They haven't addressed the, 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 the power politics questions. They haven't addressed the philosophical questions underneath, uh, you know, uh, underlie the, the, the treaty. And they haven't addressed the, 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 the political questions vis-a-vis -vis America and, and our rights. The other issue, human rights, from some of the worst human rights violators sitting in that room a big issue, how this treaty needs to be able to pay for uh, victims. Um, and you know where that money's gonna come from? A lot of that money's coming straight from the U.S. That's right, about 30% of the United Nations budget. Yeah. And that, there was an interesting article about that today, the cost, the hidden cost of this treaty. And what a lot of Americans need to understand, whether they own a firearm or not, really it's the U.S. taxpayer dollar that's gonna help fund the implementation of this treaty. That's right, and it's, it's, there's one of the big issues is what they call the Implementation Support Unit, the, the kind of the administrative body that will handle the treaty in the future. Uh, the United States wants that unit outside of the UN for that exact reason. The United States would like this Implementation Support Unit to be paid for by the people that signed the treaty, not for the UN, because if it's paid for by the UN, we end up picking up a third of the cost which is totally intolerable. Mm -hmm. Because it's really what we're watching in there. They can talk about human rights abuses. They can talk about, you know, uh, preventing rogue governments from firearms. But when you really look at what's going on, the end result is we're going to be paying the price and we have a Second Amendment that secures our right to ca carry a firearm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Let me ask you a lot of talk about will President Obama sign the treaty? And really, when you look at President Obama and his history, it really should be no surprise if he signs this treaty. You look back at 2008, there were three senators sending a letter over to Condoleezza Rice, who was then Secretary of State. Two of those senators, Senator Obama and Senator Hillary Clinton, saying we need to support this treaty. So really, it really isn't a surprise, should it be, that it, the president, not only is he going to sign it, but he signed off on these negotiations. That's right, but we're, we're, getting, uh, we're getting mixed messages from the administration. On the other hand, they will sign a treaty if a treaty comes out of here. But then on the other hand, uh, they're saying that they, they will not uh, join consensus if the treaty affects the Second Amendment. We don't exactly know what that means, and we're talking to them about that. And that's a key issue for us. But if a treaty comes out of here, I wouldn't be surprised if they signed it. Okay, but that's only part of the process, because the Senate will decide on whether it's ratified or not. That's correct, and, and that's the key. I don't think the, the I, I do not think the United States Senate will ratify no. any treaty which has any impact upon uh, civilian arms at, at, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the, the, the civilian firearms, civilian firearms, our Second Amendment firearms need to be out of the scope of this treaty. And we already have a letter, you know, several over 125 some odd senators saying, "Hey, we ain't going to ratify this." If, if the, if the Second Amendment and civilian firearms is included, but I got to ask you. You had 58 senators, 121 House uh, members. Thanks for. Got only got 100 people in the Senate. You know, I get so messed yeah, up. I know, all, I know. all the numbers they're throwing around, they're hard to keep it straight. But thanks for setting me straight on that one. But let's say the Senate doesn't ratify it, but the President still signs it. 
if by signing it, doesn't that say that he will still abide by what the treaty has in the body of that, that document? That is a definite possibility. We've had this situation before with, with the Organization of American States Firearms Protocol, or what is called SIFTA. I won't give it, it's a Spanish acronym. But uh, essentially, the Clinton administration uh, abided by the, the, you know, that that treaty, which was never ratified. But they signed it. Yeah, they signed it. So President it's a de signed it. Definite. So it's a it's, it's a definite it's a definite uh, possibility. And again, reason why gun owners really need to be concerned about what's going on inside of that building. Absolutely, and and they can't ignore it. Uh, the the ramifications here are are both immediate and long long term. Uh, especially long term because treaties, unless they're formally rejected by the United States Senate, literally stick, stick around forever, forever. But also, if the president signs it, as I was saying, and I'm just trying to show what's really at stake down the road, and, and the Senate doesn't ratify it, all the more reason why this November election is important because if he signs it, we need to get a president in here who's not going to abide by it and not going to agree with what Obama did. That's right, that's right. A lot of side events. People don't understand what else goes on here. Uh, Amnesty International has a side event today. Tell us about it. Uh, that uh, side event will be on the scope of the treaty. Uh, they're going to bring some experts in. Uh, and the, the wonderful thing about the side event is they're buying lunch. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's good for you because <laughs> I'm not invited. But also, a lot of controversy right now because of this decision by the chairman to have these closed door meetings. A lot of people not happy about it. Some, some of the meetings are open, but you can't go to this one. Some of the meetings are closed, and you can go to that one. I mean, it's it's got a lot of people saying, wait a second, how are we going to get this done by the end of the month? That's right, and, and uh, the, the, the closed meeting thing has become a little bit of a circus because they sometimes they won't tell you which meeting is closed and which meeting is open. Uh, we had a, a instance the other day where the staff told us the meeting was open, and then halfway through the meeting, they came and told us all it was closed and we had to leave. So it's, it, people are not happy about the closed meeting things. It's something that, that I think goes to the heart of the UN. It has, it, it has nothing to do with, with our issue per se, but the UN is basically an undemocratic organization. I think American citizens have got to realize that is that the UN is fundamentally flawed in that sense, that it's just not open government like well, we're as, used to, and we demand. As one previous ambassador said, there's a stealth operation, and we're seeing that very clearly. Constantly, constantly. Uh, one good point, though, is that, you know, I've been talking about Wayne LaPierre addressing this conference, and that is actually going to happen. We heard from the chairman today that will happen tomorrow. That's right. After five days, five days of wrangling, the chairman finally made up his mind and decided that at 9.15 tomorrow, NGOs would be, allowed, would be allowed to speak. Now, there was an immense amount of pressure put on him from all sides on to get that thing resolved. Uh, he could have resolved it quite early, but it, it's just symptomatic of how this conference has been run. Uh, a lot of old UN hands here uh, have told me that they've never seen the, seen the conference run so poorly. And, and it's very obvious. The chairman is, is sort of saying, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care where the opposition's coming from. But when you look at the fact that they've done what they've done with these NGOs, putting it off day after day, again, an indication they don't really want to hear what the NRA has to say, do they? That's a, a good point, but they're going to hear what the oh, NRA has to say. Oh, they're going to hear it for sure, they're and, and Wayne's going to lay it right yeah. there on the and, line, and, no and, doubt and, about and, it. And, and, and I think the U.S. government will hear what he has to say, and the U.S. government's going to, going to hear what the NRA has to say. And uh, that, that, that message is going to go far beyond this conference. It may be going to elections. It's in, and I think the NRA is going to make uh, the arms trade treaty a, a very, very important issue on their agenda. You know, I had one of the representatives come up to me today, and we were just talking about how this is all going on here. And he said to me, you know, this is all show. This is all show and tell. All these countries in there speaking. Because the nuts and bolts of what's going on here and, and, the, and the compromising, a lot of the compromising, he said, is even going to have to do with issues involving this treaty. But it's all going to be done so that we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. That, that, is, that is, unfortunately, is correct. And a lot of side deals can be made. Uh, that don't even have to do with yeah, gun control or yeah, arms. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that is something that, that, that makes this whole process even more complex. It is that you give it, get you get involved in some give and take between nations on some collateral issues, issues that you're not going to be aware of. That that, that if you if you do this on small arms, we'll do this on on nuclear arms. If you do this on Y, we'll do this on X. And and that this is a great danger, a great great danger. 
uh, because if you get a, 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 a situation in which some nuclear issue is put, pitted against some small arms issue, the nuclear issue is going to going to win. That's why the Second Amendment and that's why our positions on this are so, so important is we keep these things at the top of the agenda and it makes it hard for somebody to give away something that will hurt us. And isn't another reason why it's very important that this is this treaty is finalized via consensus, not what some of those countries are calling for, and that is a majority rules and, and we don't want a veto in there. That's right. Consensus is very, very important and uh, the United States has to stick by its position it's going to demand that the treaty be, be, be acceded to on consensus. A position we don't know, as you said, because the U.S. has yet to uh, play its hand. Well, we're, wait its we're hand. waiting. Yeah. We're waiting. We're waiting.